Hi everyone. Um, we'll hopefully have uh, lots of people join us shortly on uh, Go Rural and uh, for our Lambathon. Um, we're going to start properly just in a little while. I'm just actually getting things organised, make sure that um, we are um, all set up correctly, everything's running. I've got the team here and I'm hoping everyone can actually hear us properly. Um, we're in the lamb and shed and we're going to introduce everybody to you just shortly. I'm just looking out the shed at the same time as well and uh, because uh, my husband's just had to run very quickly out of this shed to another shed because he's got a cow calving and there may be um, a problem, I'm not sure. So we'll hopefully be able to update you with that as well when that starts. As I say, we're not quite ready to go yet. It's not quite one o'clock. I've got my timekeeper here and I'm just going to actually span round just slightly to uh, for part of the team. The point is, Iona, you're meant to be in this. Um, this is uh, Iona, who's keep <laughs> trying to get out of the shot, and um, Scott. So these are my twins and they're in um, helping today. And that's to try and make sure that we can all... Um, uh, help out when need be but to keep me right as well so Iona is going to be timekeeper today we are due to finish at half past and we're going to be um, we'll have to finish sharp today because we actually do uh, farm tours here um, of our farm experiences day to day and we actually have a tour group coming in at 1.30 so we're going to keep watching the, the comments as well. Um, Farmer Scott, my son, who has just decided to wander off around here, he's going to be um, keeping an eye on comments for us as well. So what we want to do first of all, sorry, we have a noisy lamb behind and um, we're going to just uh, stop focusing on me because I'm really not very exciting. Um, what we have uh, in front of us here is a noisy little pet lamb and uh, I really hope you can uh, actually hear me over that noisy little lamb. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about them just in a minute. They are under the heat light but if I just check my timekeeper, um, are we at one o'clock? Okay super guys so we're going to be good to go. So hopefully over the next um, half hour, you're going to learn lots about what we do at Newton Farm here in Forfar, which is in sunny Angus on the east coast of Scotland. I say sunny hesitantly today because it's been snowing this morning, um, which has put some plans um, on hold because we had hoped to get more of our sheep and lambs outside. We want to get our sheep and lambs out to the, the nice tasty grass and the fields and um, but we've had to delay that because of the weather so in front of me we've got um, one little lamb sleeping in the middle of the pen here another noisy one that's just lying down and a little kid that um, has been a little bit poorly um, the little kid we actually have poor goats here on the farm as well as uh, sheep and cattle and that little um, poor goat Sorry, my um, uh, stick there just uh, moved the wrong way. Um, that little boor goat um, was a triplet with mum and was absolutely um, getting on great. But we think mum has been struggling to feed all three and she's actually had to, uh, she's get decided she'd rather feed her boys and stop feeding the little girls. So we've had to bring the wee girl in for a heat under the light and we're trying to help feed her as well. It's been a little bit difficult. She's uh, looking a bit brighter today, which is brilliant. Can I just check? I'm just going to do a sound check. Is, is everyone hearing me okay? If I can get a couple of thumbs up, um, that would be tremendous, um, just to make sure that you can hear us. Um, the other two sheep in the pen with her, they are lambs, they're actually a set of triplets who were born last night during the night. And I'm just going to come over to the next pen because this is where uh, mum is. Oh, and sorry, Mrs. My uh, machine just went absolutely wonky there. Apologies. Um, hopefully you're back seeing me the right way up now or seeing the sheep. 
This sheep here had triplets during the night. Scott's going to just update me on a, a comment in a minute. And um, that's her um, brother and sister just in here. So thanks for telling me you can see us okay. That is super. So I'm going to come and span round here just in a second. And uh, we're going to see what's going on in the shed in front of us now. Um, Scott, can you just tell me what was that comment, Darlin? Sorry, Emily from Glasgow is asking, where do you move the lambs to? When do they get eaten? Okay, so um, when we are going to be putting our lambs out with their mums to the fields very soon, um, after a few days of them being healthy, they will go out to the fields and they'll stay with their mums in the fields for them to feed them. Um, that will be for until they wean, until they're weaned, and they'll be out with mums for a good few months, I would say at least six months. Um, we've got some exciting stuff going on behind us at the moment. Um, lambs are not normally eaten. We don't normally put our lambs away um, to be um, eaten or uh, put um, to, for a butchery until they're about a year old here. Um, but other places uh, may do it slightly earlier than that. So, anyway, back to actually sheep um, that are in front of us. We have uh, our sheep just resting here just now. I'm actually going to swing around slightly here and tell, show you this one. This sheep here is actually lambing now. So we want to really concentrate on her just now for you. Um, she has got a blue dot on her shoulder and that has come from... Um, us giving a little spray dot. You'll just see there that she's had a water bag and I think there's feet there. So we might actually see a live birth going on. She's only due a single lamb and um, that's what the blue dot tells us. The blue dot is actually... I'm going to just come back here a little bit. We really want the sheep to lie down to lamb. It's probably a lot easier for her. So we're going to just give her a bit of space. Um, so I'm just going to head back this way a little bit. She's determined to come to the bars and I think it's because some of the pets are over here in opposite her. She thinks she, they're maybe one of her lambs already. So Scott's just keeping an eye just now on her. So the, um, the blue dot on her shoulder tells us she's due a single. That's because we actually scan all our sheep. And we have them um, scanned quite a few weeks before they come in from the fields. So they're out in the fields. We'd prefer them to be out there having their grass. And we bring them in like any mum. It's not always easy having a baby. So that one's just pushing. She's just pressing. She's got her contractions, but I'm quite surprised she's not actually lying down. Um, so what's... Uh, the single dot on the shoulder tells us we're expecting a single lamb from scanning, just like we would with humans. While she's doing that, we'll come back if there's any more action coming from uh, the babies. I'm just going to span around a little bit. Um, this sheep that's lying over in this pen here as well is... Um, oh, hi, Summer. Sorry, we've got a wee friend here uh, come to say hello. This is Summer. Summer was a bottle-fed fed lamb here in the, on the farm two years ago. And she's actually, um, she's, she's, she's coming for a treat. So Farmer Scott's just giving her a wee treat there. She was a bottle-fed lamb that was out in the field with her mums. And she used, to, she used to come to the farmhouse looking for a treat. Um, Farmer... Graham is just heading down to check on that sheep down there. And, oh, Summer's trying to knock the fence over now because she wants more treats. So, Summer, when she had her... Um, her, uh, her mum had her out in the field and she was actually being bottle-fed while she was still with mum because mum didn't have enough milk to um, feed her. So, what we ended up doing... Right, we're just going to come back down here because surprisingly, very quickly... They've just uh, actually managed to help that sheep. Um, we don't want to um, interfere unless there's a problem. But obviously that was uh, a little bit of a struggle for her. So we've just helped, just helped her push that little lamb out. She's quite happily now had her wee lamb. And she's up to her feet very quickly um, to start cleaning it all. 
and um, she'll get that all cleaned up. We'll leave her in peace um, to do that, but soon we'll take her to her own little private pen and that will give her space to bond with her baby um, for the next 24 hours and then we'll make sure she's feeding that baby okay as well. So we are expecting just the one baby. And if MD has any comments that I miss during um, the, the live just now, it's quite difficult to keep an eye on um, the action in front of me and what you're all telling us and saying. I will answer you after. We'll absolutely come back to you. Um, so that is, uh, you can see how quickly um, the sheep can actually have their babies. Um, we didn't know she was lambing until we literally came out here. She had just started when we were starting to go live. Um, I just want to come down a little bit. I'm nearly tripping over a sheep here. Um, a lot of our sheep on the farm here are, are um, actually named and friendly ones because we've kept a lot of our pet lambs from the past for... Uh, Sorry, Graham's moving through the pens, so the sheep are moving up. Um, so we have a lot of friendly named ones here you can visit um, if you are here on an, an experience. Um, in front of me just now is uh, a sheep that's actually had a problem called a prolapse. And so we have get put on a prolapse harness on her, and that's to support her um, until she's going to have her baby so that she doesn't um, push out more than just the baby. And that harness will allow her to actually push the baby out while um, and keep everything in place for her. So that will help her. So she's quite content wearing that, and that will support her through her delivery. I'm just going to come down here. We've got some cows in the background and some more of the sheep here. Um, the one I'm just coming round to just now, this is Bunty. So Bunty was a pet lamb on the farm as well. And she's, um, she's just, all the, it's lovely to have that connection with some of our sheep going forward. Summer's determined I have more treats in my pocket. So she's desperate to come and see us. Um, so I'm going to move down out of this pen um, now to show you what happens when they get to the next stage when that sheep will go into its own little private pen we'll show you our maternity ward I've got Diana in front of me here as well Diana looks like she's going to have lots of babies but she is only scanned to have two so if the sheep have no marking on their back like most of them here they would just have um, be having twins and that is exactly what we want them to have. We would rather they have twins because they can feed two babies at the same time. So that is um, perfect for us. So here Diana is here and uh, hopefully she'll just be having two babies. So I'm just going to head back along here and span round. This is the, the hay that's in here, the haylage for the sheep to feed while they're inside until they get out to the tasty grass. So in here, we're going to head to these pens here. These are some of the pet lambs born earlier on in the year. We did our first lambing. I'm going to move away from them. We've, they're being so noisy. They're due a feed at two o'clock, which is why they're shouting on us. So those pet lambs down there, they were born in February. We had a first small lambing in February, and we're now on our main lambing now. And... Um, this is, we only have 120 sheep this year to lamb. Um, we have 55 cows that we're calving and we also have um, about 20 goats that we kid each year. We're going to kid later on in the year in August and um, we've just got a few just now that we're kidding. So in here, um, this sheep has a, a one blue dot on its shoulder like the one we've seen lamb. And that sheep here, she's... Um, she actually had her first lamb in the field um, before they came in. Now, unfortunately, it was a huge single lamb that she had and she actually ended up losing it. It didn't present properly, just like sometimes with human babies, they don't um, present to come out right. And we've, what we've done is if we have triplet babies, like you saw earlier, right at the very start, um, and if there's too many babies and the mum doesn't have enough milk, we will take a baby away um, to become the mum. We will start becoming the next mum. How are we doing for time, Scott? Uh, we're doing all right. We're about 
through. Okay, super. So what we've got here is um, we've got this sheep that lost its baby lamb because it was so huge. So what we were able to do was take one of the pet lambs that we take from a triplet to allow those two babies that are left with the mum to have the best chance um, that we then give that little pet lamb a new mum. And as you can see, this mum has gone down. Have a wee sniff of her lamb. It's got up on the feet for us. And this little lamb is getting on absolutely perfect. Um, sorry, my uh, thing's just gone a little bit crazy. Um, technology isn't always the easiest thing to deal with, um, as you can tell. And being farmers, we're never very expert in technology. Um, so this sheep here, she also had a single lamb and she's been getting on absolutely fine with her baby. This was born yesterday. So once they come out of the holding pen over, or the big pen over in front of me, they come into what is our maternity ward here. And that maternity ward is set up um, to give them a small pen to get time to actually um, just bond with their babies and to also um, allow us to check their feeding okay. That is a really important thing. Um, we do not want them to have any problems with feeding. And so we make sure that they're feeding absolutely fine. And if there is a problem, they may then, there's one just going over to feed there just now. And sheep can only feed two lambs at the same time, one on either side. Um, I've just seen a wee comment there. Does the mum that lost the lamb not mind the other baby smelling different? Um, sometimes what we have to do, which works really well, is if you haven't let her lick the lamb that she's maybe just lost, and you present the first lamb and put a bit of the birthing fluid on, or the new lamb, sorry, a bit of the birthing fluid on, the sheep just accepts it really quickly. And that is the simplest thing. We, we want to make it as stress-free and easy for them. Um, we're going to just head back uh, to this next set of pens and that's because once they've had 24 hours in there and we know everything is going absolutely fine with the babies we then put them into the holding pen and this is the holding pen just before they would be due to go outside but because the snow has arrived we won't be putting out lambs so that they don't get cold it's too cold just now for putting out these new lambs out oh here's one of my friends here so this little sheep here is one of our pet friends and um, she's had one baby. Now I know that, but to look at her, when she's out in the field, it's difficult to tell all the different sheep. So we number our sheep and we also mark them with a specific colour. So you can see the blue on this one here. She's got one baby who's lying sleeping in the middle. They've both got the number eight on them just now in blue, and blue for us means it's a single lamb. Once they're in the field, if they have two lambs, they'll have an orange or red mark on their side, and both mum and babies, like this sheep here, will have number 19. And her babies are actually just sleeping right down below me just now. Um, that means that if we look out in the field, we very easily can see whether she has her twins, or in fact, if there's any problem at all. I'm gonna go round here, just because that Zwarble sheep over here, she's got two beautiful lambs and all the lambs just at the side, they've all gone to have a feed of their mums. Now we want them to feed with from mums. We don't want to have to feed lambs. Um, we would rather they have a good start with their mums and they'll uh, feed them right through to weaning. And these sheep are, or these lambs here are tucking in and getting on absolutely fine. We've got a lot of different breeds here. We've got um, Zwarbles like the one in front. We've also got some mules and we've got Texels as well as Cheviots here and some Suffix. Um, we've not got any Suffix close, I think, at the moment. Let me see if there might be one actually just around this area here. So we had a Suffix just down here that had a single yesterday. And that's one that looks like Sean the sheep off the telly. So once they're in the big holding pen, that's the last stage where we know everything's going well. If there is a problem, hello little Emily. So Emily here is one of my, is actually my favorite sheep on the farm. She, um, we do rescue some animals and um, take on some animals that have, um, have problems. And Emily was one lamb that we took on four years ago when we first started our tours. And little Emily was actually 
a very poorly little lamb who was really tiny. And we, thank you, Emily. And she was bottle fed and she absolutely knows her name and runs down the field to see us when we go out to see her. So she had twins at four o'clock yesterday morning, a wee girl and boy, and they're getting on absolutely great. So we're going to head just down here to the pens where we've got pets in. You've seen some of the bigger pets, but we actually want you to see some of the little ones as well. The little ones you saw right at the beginning were only uh, born today, and the little goat, but these ones were born yesterday, and they're all getting on brilliantly. They've taken to a bottle really well. Their tummies are full, which is why they're still sleeping here, and um, the black one yesterday wouldn't actually feed. Um, uh, very well on the bottle but they've all come on really well and they love being under the heat light we have a heat light because when you are with your mum you have no problem um keeping cozy because they've got their nice warm fleeces but when these little lambs um come under uh, sorry aren't with their mums they have no fat layer yet to keep them cozy you might see they're a little bit wrinkly they've got to grow into their skin and so what we do is we give them the heat light so that they can stay nice and cosy. So we've got about 10 minutes left for today. So I'm going to move on. These are two kids here that um, they are just cozied up as well. These are Toggenbergs. These are dairy goats. Um, they're just cozied up in here as well. And if I come down to the next one, we've got two little boor goats here and a tiny, well, tiny little boor goat. Um, on the right hand side when it was born. It was a very small little triplet. The one, yeah, we do actually keep our ones, some of ours for um, past retirement, definitely. Um, there's some of the sheep here and met most, a lot of the animals here. Actually, oh, hello, this is a salmon goat. This is a dairy goat. Emily and um, Diana, sheep like that, that we have a strong connection with, they are uh, never going to go anywhere. They will stay here and live out their lives. Um, we have actually got a lot of um, animals that have become pets and that are going to go into retirement will stay, including our bull Dodd. He is um, he's hand fed on a lot of our experiences. Oh, I'm coming back round because I think there's something else happening down here. Oh, we've got another sheep lambing in the, over there against the wall. So this is a bit better because she's actually lying down. She's a warble and she is just lying there pressing, so Scott's going to keep an eye on her. We don't want to interfere. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. My daughter noticed that one. That's unheard of. So Iona doesn't come out of the house very often. So, um, so this sheep here is just starting to lamb, and she's pressing. Um, so we are um, happy to let her get on with this. We don't want to interfere until um, they... Uh, need us. It's only if there is a problem and they need us. Um, this warble that's gone up to say hello to Scott here, um, she's actually scanned to have triplets. She's got a blue mark on her bottom. So if it's on the shoulder at our farm, it means one. If it's on the bottom, it means three. And if there's no mark like the one in front of me, it means they're having twins. Um, I hope everyone's keeping up with the uh, everything I'm saying just now. I'm wanting to check what's happened with that. Sheep's just got up again, so she's not ready yet. Um, she was up speaking to the pets earlier on. Um, we, we, she was actually trying to go in to see the pets in the pen right at the very top. So I think if any of those pets or any other sheep had lambed in here earlier on today, she would try and steal them. Um, so that's why we also pen them up in a little pen for the 24 hours before they go on to the holding pen. Now today, I would love to have taken you out to the field, um, but I've actually just looked out and I can see it snowing. So I'm just going to span round um, and we'll go to the door. But this is why we are not going to um, go out to the field today to see the ones that were born earlier in the year um, because we've got all the snow um, coming in now. So... Yep, it's snowing, which uh, is a bit of a shame, but the older lambs will be absolutely fine out in the field. Um, they've got that fat layer, they've grown into their skin. Now what I'm wanting to do is just to nip across to the other shed, um, just to let you see. We also have alpacas on our farm, and we have some highland cows, we have a pig, we have our goats, and we have the cows. And we do our farm tour experiences all year. Um, 
but we also have accommodation. We're not able to show you the accommodation today for time, um, but we have a we have an award-winning um, bed and breakfast here on the farm, and we also have I don't know if you can see in the very distance there. I can see all the goats that are down the the den. They're all making their way up again because they'll be wanting inside. They'll get let back in to to get some cover. These are sheep out in this field, but these are not ones with lambs. Um, and then we're going to come into the shed. The cows are in here now. They're in here over winter because it's too cold outside. And my dog's down the end there so waiting to see us. So I'm coming in. We've got our cows and calves. We're just going to come in nice. Oh, there's a little calf at the front. We calve about 55 cows each year. And I'm just looking for the new one. We have limousine cattle in Aberdeen Angus. And oh, there we go. So this is little Aberdeen Angus calf that's just been born just while we were um, watching, or you guys were watching, um, and we were looking at the lambs. So it's uh, very happy sitting there. Mum's giving it a clean. Mum's looking very proud. And if you can see, she's got a big bag of milk to feed that little calf. So everything should be going fine with that. I'll just span round the, the rest of the shed here. And you can see that... Um, they're all very contented lying down there. As I say, we'll only have them in over winter when it's too cold. And then all these cows and calves will go out to the fields. The cows will be feeding their um, calves for the rest of the, the summer, the rest of the year. But they'll love to get out to the grass field. On this side of the shed, this is our limousine cattle. These are the limousine ones. There's a lovely little one down here lying fast asleep. And um, I'll just span round again. Ah, okay. So uh, Farmer Graham's just reminded me that there's one over here, the little brown one that's cuddled up beside its mummy. That was born this morning at 5.30. Um, Farmer Graham and Scott like to tell me when they're, um, they've been up during the night calving and lambing. So there's always a hint that they've had a long night. So we've been watching um, the cattle and the, the lambs and the sheep for about six weeks. We've uh, been calving and lambing, so we have to keep um, an eye on what's going on. So um, I can't believe how snowy it is out this side. I'm not going to go down to the other end of the, the shed here. We're going to shut doors to keep the snow out. Um, we're going to actually come um, oh yeah if we came to the b, b can I send my kids to help feed them early morning yeah that is one of the things we do do if you're staying on the farm you can get involved and you can come and help um, obviously uh, health and safety is one of our priorities as well on the farm um, but yeah that is absolutely an experience we like to share at the end of the day we want everyone to know you know the reality of farming and where your food comes from so that is what we want to share and how we actually farm our, our farm. Every farm's different. Um, as I said, said earlier, we have a lot of um, friendly pets that we do keep um, on the farm. I'm going to nip back to the other shed just to see, well, before we finish, with the snow coming down, can't believe it, um, just to see what's happening in case that other sheep's actually lambed or in case we can catch the end of that side. Um, we, uh, if anybody wants to find anything more about us, we're on Facebook at Newton Farm Holidays. And we're also, we have our own Facebook page, newtonfarmholidays.co.uk. But one of the best things we've found in the last uh, year is taking part with uh, Go Rural. Go Rural is um, a fantastic group of farmers who've got together in Scotland to promote and share their lives and their daily um, work with... Uh, oh, Scott's just helped that little lamb out. It was just coming, starting to come out. He's just giving it a wee pull, a wee help. He's giving it a rub just to make sure it's okay. And uh, he's just held it up a second there just to make sure that there's no um, gunk coming out of its mouth. And he'll put it up to the mummy's head so she can start licking it. Scott, what um, is that one marked for? Twins. Twins, okay. So we'll wait, we'll just give her a wee bit of time and see if the other one will come out. He's just checked there that she's got milk there and also that if there's, he thinks there is definitely a second coming. Sometimes the scanner can get it wrong. 
Um, we've got quite a few that this year that have been marked to have triplets and only had twins, which is perfect, actually. That's what we want. Um, we want them to have um, successful twins that they can feed, no problem. So that's great. It's, yeah, it's very unusual to catch the birth live. So um, I'm really delighted you've actually had a chance to see that. Um, the one that whammed earlier is uh, actually up to her feet and feeding. So I'm going to come up here just to let you see. And so we can finish off up here. And that's just before my um, tour group arrives because we do um, share very much our farming experiences here and we do alpaca walking as well. Um, this is the first time we've done an only lambing special on our tours. Usually you come and get to hand feed the Highland cows and the alpacas and the pig and everything as well. So how often would you check the sheep and cows at night and at lambing and calving time? Um, thanks, Dawn. That's a great question. We actually... Um, we actually check our uh, animals three to four times during the night. Um, I suffice to say it's not me, it's Farmer Graham that gets up to do that. And uh, that's why he's really tired just now. Um, but he, we do have cameras as well that look over. So if we see any problem at all, we'll get up and come out and help. And um, that, I can't believe how quickly, it's always amazing to see how quickly the lambs are up to their feet. Um, and calves too. That's all getting cleaned and uh, already uh, feeding, which is, is amazing. That's the best thing to see. Um, oh, there's a very athletic sheep just came running down, jumping over the other one there. Um, so that's a successful um, delivery and she'll go into a pen now. We'll maybe get her into this pen over here just to give her that bonding time now. Um, I will go back to answer everyone's comments or questions. So thank you so much for watching today. Uh, tomorrow, it's going up to the north uh, of Scotland into the Highlands to Tain. And we're with um, the Scott family on Fern Farm, where you can see their high health uh, fern, uh, cattle and sheep. And uh, I hope you enjoy that. But thanks again to Go Rural for letting us uh, be part of this experience. I hope everyone's enjoyed it. We do share our farming life daily on our Facebook page. So if you um, want to uh, keep watching, then uh, please do follow that page. And thanks. It was so nice to see lots of faces or names, sorry, that I actually recognise as well. So thanks for joining us today. And we'll just... Uh, leave you with that little lamb over there. In fact, sorry, I'll come round to this one that's actually already sitting up. I think there's another sheep wanting to help. I'll just come round the side. And um, look at that, it's already, oh, sheep in the way. It's already sitting up, head up in the air, getting on brilliant. Thanks very much, everyone. And, oh, hi, Nancy. Just spotted somebody that I know that's a visitor that comes over from uh, America to see us. I'll hopefully see you sometime soon if you get back over. So um, thanks again. Take care, everyone.